The lesson outcome for this video is, I can factor a difference of squares. Now the thing about factoring a difference of squares is you need to understand what the vocabulary means, difference of squares, what does this mean? And then the other thing you need to understand in this section is actually this is just a shortcut, okay? It is not something you have to learn how to do, but it is a very, very helpful shortcut. It makes things a lot easier. So let me show you what I mean by that, and then we'll talk about what difference of squares means. Let's take this example right here, x squared minus 16, and factor it. Now, if you think about what we've been talking about for the last several lessons, in front of the x squared is no value written down, which means it's a 1. So we can factor this using our skills we learned about factoring when a equals 1. To do that, we wrote the c term out off to the side over here, and we talked about its factors. Now notice the c term here is negative 16, and I'm going to demonstrate this by uh, adding something here. What you're probably noticing is there's only two terms here, okay, and that's because our middle term is missing. This middle term right here is our x term, our term with the variable x, and there isn't any here. What that means is you have plus 0x. You don't have any x's. And then you have minus 16. Now that look, might look more normal to you about what we've been working on in class. So let's factor this. Negative 16, because a equals 1, we just have to take that third um, term, the c term, negative 16, and find its factors. Well, its factors are 1 and 16, and one of them needs to be negative, or 2 and 8, and one of them needs to be negative. It's not divisible by 3, but it is divisible by 4, 4 times 4, and one of them needs to be negative. Now, just like normal, where are the two factors, where's the factor pair that adds up to our middle term of 0 x's? Well, you might see right here, negative 4 and positive 4 adds up to 0. So we would know that our factors are... Remember when we have a equals 0, we can just put our parentheses down. We know x times x gives us this x squared right here. And then we put our factors of negative 4 and positive 4. This is now factored, and it's factored just what, like what we've been learning in class. But, like I mentioned, there's a shortcut. The reason there's a shortcut is because 16, the number 16, is what we know as a perfect square. A perfect square means that it can be square rooted and 16 can be square rooted because 4 times 4 is 16. Because it's 4 times 4 and because we needed to get a negative value with 16, negative 16, one of them had to be negative and the other one had to be positive which means these add up to 0 which is our middle term. Long story short, what this means is, if we see a perfect square in our c value right here, and we have a difference, now let's remember, key word here, difference is another word for subtraction, right? So it needs to be a subtraction symbol. If we have a, a difference of perfect squares, so 16 we said is a perfect square because it's 4 times 4, Difference means subtraction, and we have a subtraction symbol in between our terms. And to be honest, over here, this is actually a perfect square as well. x squared is a perfect square because x times itself, x times x, is x squared. When we have a difference of two perfect squares, we can simply write the perfect square of this, which is x times x, and the perfect square of this, which is 4, and we can write 4 times 4, and then we make one of them negative and one of them positive. And that will always end up getting us a zero for a middle term, which means we just have the two terms. Let's just watch this in action a couple times. So here is the same exact thing that we just were working on. If I notice, <clears throat> excuse me, if I notice that this is a perfect square, which it is, and this is a perfect square, which it is, and I see subtraction, super important, then we can put our parentheses down, and we can put the perfect square, or the square root of this, in the first two spots, well, x and x. 
and we can put the perfect square of this or the square root of this in here, 4 and 4. And then if we make one of them positive and one of them negative, we have factored that um, expression. Let's look at some more. Okay, so here are some examples we're going to look at. And again, using this shortcut, these are going to be very fast. If we look at these two terms, if you see this, first of all, just remember that x squared is always a perfect square. So all of these, we've got a perfect square at the beginning because x times x is x squared. If we look at the second term, 25, is that a perfect square? Is there something that multiplied by itself gives, gives us 25? The answer is yes, 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So all we need, oh, and sorry, way, way important here. The third thing we have to check is that this is a subtraction sign in here, and it is. So we can write x in the front of each set of parentheses. x times x is x squared. We can write 5 here and here, because 5 times 5 is 25. And then we can put a plus in and a minus in, and we're done. The next one, x squared is a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square because it's 2 times itself, or 2 times 2. And again, very important, it is subtraction. So we can write our two sets of parentheses. x times x gives us the x squared. 2 times 2 gives us the 4. And 1 needs to be plus, and 1 needs to be minus. And we have factored it. These get really quick and easy because we get used to the pattern in this shortcut x times x is x squared, 8 times 8 is 64, it is a subtraction sign in the middle, so we can put a plus in one and a minus in one, and it is done. Okay, next one, x squared and 36, 36 is 6 times 6, so you might be thinking this one will work out just fine, but it will not. This is not a difference of squares because it's a plus sign in between. This is the sum of two squares. And you know what? The sum of two squares never factors. There is no two factors that when multiplied together gives us x squared plus 36. You might be thinking, oh, can't we put x times x here and then 6 times 6 here and put plus in both of them? But that would not work. Because if we did FOIL now to check our work or do an array to check our work, we'd get x squared, and then the outside would be 6x, and then the inside would be 6x, both positive. Well, what's a positive 6x and a positive 6x? Well, that would be 12x for our middle term. We don't have a positive 12x in the middle term. We have 0x. So this will not work, even though it also gives us 36 at the end. It will not work. And this problem is what we call not factorable. Okay? Again, if there's a sum, it's not going to work. All right, now these next three change things up just a little bit. It's still the same process, though, as long as we've got a difference, which is subtraction, which we have, and two perfect squares. We've talked about how x squared is a perfect square, x times x, and we've talked about 49, well that's a perfect square, 7 times 7. And what about this number out here though, 16? Well, 16 is also a perfect square, 4 times 4. So we've got everything as needed in order to use our shortcut. Now be careful this time, it's not just going to be x times x. The 16 right here means that this is going to be 4x times 4x. Because what's 4x times 4x? Well, it's 16x squared. And then we put in a 7 and a 7, because 7 times 7 is 49. And then we make 1 a sum and 1 a difference. 1 is plus, 1 is minus, and we are done. Again, if we check this by FOIL or the array, it would work. I'm just going to do that one more time here. 4x times 4x is 16x squared. The outside will be negative 28x, and the inside will be positive 28x. What's negative 28x plus 28x? Well, that's 0x, which is why we have no middle term. And then 7 times negative 7 is negative 49. 
Let's try these last two. Why don't you pause the video and try these last two and then check back to see if you factored them correctly. Okay, so 100 is a perfect square. It's 10 times 10, and x squared is a perfect square, x times x. We have 10x times 10x. 81 is also a perfect square. It's 9 times 9. And again, we're being very careful here. This is a subtraction, so it is a difference of two squares. And we always put a plus in one and a minus in the other. The last one on the screen is also a difference of two squares. We have subtraction. 8 times 8 is 64. 3 times 3 is 9. And x times x is x squared. So we put our parentheses down. We know 3x times 3x gives us that 9x squared. We know that 8 times 8 gives us the 64, and 1 is a plus and 1 is a minus, and we have factored that. Okay, I have just two more slides for you, and this is just to make sure that you know the square of each number from 1 to 12, and the square root of the numbers that we get when we square them. You'll understand that on the second screen, or the, the next screen. So the first thing I want you to do is just pause the video, write these down, 2, 6, 9, 1, 3, 11, 5, 7, 4, 10, 8, and 12, and I'd like you to square each of them. See if you can do it without your calculator. Again, you're multiplying that number by itself. So pause the video, try them, and then check them. Okay. So 2 squared, you should have got 4. 6 squared is 36. 9 squared is 81. 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, 11 squared, do you know that one? It's 121. 5 squared is 25, 5 times 5. 7 squared is 49. 4 squared is 16. 10 squared is 100. 8 squared is 64. And 12 squared, 144. Okay, it's, good. it's uh, important for us to know all of these squares as we go along. Now on the next screen, we're going to take these kind of values and we're going to square root them to see if we can come up with the number that, they get, that you get when you square root. Okay, so again, go ahead, square root each number and see if you can get these on your own and then check to see how you did. All right, the square root of 16, meaning what times itself gives us 16? That is 4. 25, that's 5 times 5. 9, 3 times 3. 4 is 2 times 2. 1 is 1 times 1. The square root of 121 is 11. The square root of 64 is 8. 6 times 6 is 36. Sorry. 49 is 7. 81 is 9. 100 is 10 and 144 is 12.